Welcome to King Lizard's Game Lounge and TT Isle of Man Ride on the Edge on Xbox One. So in this video I'm going to take you through a couple of runs on the Snaefield Mountain Circuit. This is the actual Isle of Man TT Circuit, 60 kilometers or 60.70 kilometers I believe. This circuit, absolutely mammoth circuit, basically three times Nuremberg, over three times Nuremberg. And I'm going to do it in two different bike classes and two different viewpoints. First up, I'm in third person perspective on the Super Sport class. The next lap I'm going to do is going to be on the Super Bike class, which is obviously the higher power class. And I'm going to be doing that in cockpit view right up in front of the visor. And that is going to be as tough as hell. Now, I've not done the cockpit view yet. So this is going to be my first run in cockpit when I do it on the next lap. The third person perspective, I've only done two laps of this circuit so far. This is my third lap, which I decided I'd record for the channel and see how I get on here. I haven't done too bad, I've had a few accidents. At the moment on this run it's all clean, but obviously I'm only, what, well, not even a minute in yet. And it is, you know, quite a technical circuit. Now this game, if you don't know much about it, and I'll be honest, until around October I hadn't even heard of this game. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, fantastic, I can't wait for this. I'm a massive fan of Ironman TT or any form of motorcycling, um, as is my dad as well. And, you know, I've just been gagging to get my hands on this game. And I'm happy to report, you know, handling on this game is fantastic. It is by far the best handling for any motorcycle game I've ever played. It really does feel like you're, you know, you're riding a bike. You can feel the weight. You can feel the grip and the distortion as you take corners. You know, it, it's amazing. And also sections like this where you're storming down the road and the wind is whipping up the side of you and you can hear that, especially in 7 one stereo, sounds absolutely mind-blowing. And it really just adds to the atmosphere. You know, everything's pretty much a blur when you get to kind of 200 plus kilometers an hour. But in third person perspective, this is tough. But when I go into cockpit mode, it's going to be even more brutal. And it's going to be a hell of a lot harder to see what's going on in the circuit. Now, what I'm finding with these um, super sport class bikes is actually, obviously they're a bit lighter. This bike is 196 kilograms. And I'm finding that it's quite easy on some of the tighter corners to lose the rear end of these bikes or actually lose control. So you really do have to be quite gentle with them on the tighter corners. It is very easy to go into a sliding crash. So I'm just backing off a bit here and this section here is quite nasty. First time I did this I landed up in that particular chevron kind of brick there. Didn't do me any favours. And this section is quite a technical section. I'm going to back off a bit here. I'm doing this live as I talk, by the way. So forgive me if I make mistakes. Obviously, talking and doing this and trying to see what's coming up in front of me is quite difficult because this is quite brutal. The game in itself isn't just the Isle of Man TT circuit. There are 10 tracks in total, including this circuit. And they're all obviously TT orientated tracks. This is pretty much what we would call in the UK a B road and obviously it's quite a small road so it's a very technical piece of road to race on and you have to consider that the guys do this in real life and you know quite a lot of people respectfully have lost their lives in this race you know it is one of the most if not the most dangerous motorcycle race around and you know that's kind of what makes it so exciting I think you know that what these guys pull off in real life on this is just phenomenal obviously we get the comfort of you know sitting in our chair and playing a video game and you know getting that sensation and I think they've done a fantastic job I haven't ever personally driven a motorcycle but I have been on a couple of motorcycles that friends have owned one which was um, I think it was a CBR 1000 actually or something similar to that and put it this way 150 mile an hour on a bike it's like everything is standing still it's like you're not you know it's like everything else around you isn't moving it's pretty scary but exhilarating at the same time and you know although I haven't physically had my hands on the handlebar 
I have experienced being on the back of one of these monsters at some rather extreme speeds and you know this game pulls it off in my opinion and it's everything I was hoping it would be from a handling perspective but more so from a circuit perspective I really wasn't oh, tough old corner I felt the back go a little bit I really wasn't expecting the foliage and the side of the road to look as good as it does the amount of detail they've put into the crowd into the houses into the you know the hedging and the you know the foliage of the side of the road is phenomenal it is by far the best side of the road graphics i've seen i would love to see this on xbox one x there is actually an xbox one x enhanced version for this game and i'm sure it's going to look mind-blowing and it's you know, definitely something I'm going to get in the not too distant future, the Xbox One X, but for now I can't record in HD, so that's why I kind of haven't jumped ship as yet. But this looks phenomenal on Xbox One. Xbox One X is going to be mind blown, I'm sure. Now, quite a nasty little corner coming up here. I'll back off just a little bit as I come through these sections. There's some extremely fast sections of road in here, and some of the sections where you see these little kinks you can kind of get away with things this is lethal this particular section i very nearly killed myself on that the first time i came round. i just narrowly missed it but there's also a section which i've seen a very nasty accident in real life on the iron man tt you basically go over like a humpback bridge and it kind of veers off to the left but the pub is directly in front of the humpback bridge and i actually seen someone fly off the damn bridge jeez oh, how did I get away with that? That was lucky. I thought I was going to go straight in the hedge there. That was going to be the end of it. So I've managed to secure a clean lap at the moment. Obviously, I've gone off curb and stuff, but this doesn't seem to record dirty laps. And to be honest, with the speeds they're riding, if you can kind of get away with getting over a curb, you know, you're definitely not going to be going up the curb on purpose to gain time because it's the kind of thing that's going to kill you on a bike. So. Uh, no dirty lap for me there so I've managed to get through this so far no accidents and we are about a third of the way through this at the moment so a really tight right hander here backing it off there just so I can get it around the corner carries on going around here got a nasty section through the town here so this is not a place anyone wants to have an accident it's just lots of solid objects to hit and this little section is a little tricky so I'm going to back off here and there went up the curb that was close there's a couple of close calls there maybe my numbers aren't maybe my clean lap is going to get brutalized any second now this particular section is really nasty that I just went through there first time I came through there I hit the house on the left side and uh, Kind of slid down it. The thing with the crashes in this game, it, and it, it may do it for the respect out of the riders, which I can kind of understand, is that when you have an accident, you don't always see it from the rider's perspective. So you see the bike flying, you know, around and the guy flying off. You do see it occasionally, but 50% of the time, you also kind of see it from the bike view. It's just like you're looking at the bike as the bike's crashing, rather than the external view of the accident. I personally would rather see the external view of the accident, although I kind of, you know, I can see from a developer perspective they need to have some kind of, you know, sensitivity towards that. This is that section I was telling you about, so that's the Raven pub there. That is really nasty, that corner. Someone in real life hit that thing at full speed or a good 100 mile an hour or so. And I don't know what happened to move on, so I didn't check up on it, but it didn't look very nice at the time. So this, um, section here nice high speed linking around that corner there full on 237 250 plus km an hour here Got another bit of a kink in the road here I'm going to back off just a little bit and then we've got a few kink sections this is quite tricky if you take this bit too fast it is quite greasy there and the bike tends to lose it so you do have to back off a bit there that particularly back there was quite a nasty section especially on my first and second one 
on um, third person perspective. Managed to squeeze through it though. Might make 10 minutes here clean without coming off the bike, which is the best I've done so far. Really like this section, absolutely mental speed, 302 kilometers now, 306. Had to back off, so I went into that hedge there. Gonna have to brake real hard. Gonna go in this really tight right hand to slow the bike down enough. Lost the back end just a fraction. Had to back off the accelerator there. And then some few technical sections coming up here. It's a bit nasty. Nasty kink in the road coming up on the left. I'm going to take this easy. I've kept this clean so far. I want to try and keep it clean. There is an achievement for getting the whole thing clean, just literally doing a lap clean. Whether I'll get that today or not be another story. But um, a lot of the achievements in this game, if you're interested, are kind of based around progressive racing. So, you know, completing the campaign, that kind of stuff, doing so many miles. Um, there are some for falling off and stuff like that, although there might be you know, smaller achievements. A lot of the bigger achievements are pro very progressive, so you have to put quite a bit of time into this game to get all of the achievements. Now, in terms of hardness, this game has really good levels of difficulty. And the great thing about this game, it is actually very tough at the easiest difficulty with all the assists on. And that's how I'm driving it at the moment, by the way. I'm driving it with all the assists on, up the curb. That was close. And it's manageable. Obviously, you've got to learn the circuits. That's going to be the tough part. But you can handle this bike. Anyone can pick this game up and play it. So if you're interested in this game, don't be put off by the fact that it, you think it's Project Cars 2 or it's a set of Corsa. It's not. It's friendly, you can pick it up and you can play it. Obviously the only thing you need to be aware of, a lot of this stuff is just time trialing. You know, it's racing against the clock, trying to be the one across the line with the best time and obviously the cleanest lap. So, you know, but it is very much a bike simulation. If you want a full on hardcore simulation, this game will do that as well. Now I, had a, I did have a brief go without assists and in the hardest mode, and my god, that is, yeah, that's going to be hard work to master, that's for sure. I did actually do a mix of medium and low assists, and I was able to get around the circuit on my first lap um, in third person perspective that way. Although I did come off a few times when I slowed down and I kind of got into first or second gear. I was over revving and throwing myself off the bike it was actually very tough to get going again so that is going to take a bit of skill to manage obviously that's going to be where the better times are is doing it you know without the assists and obviously the manual gearing and stuff that's going to be where the best times are going to be gotten out of this game but for me right now it's all about just enjoying this game so that's why i've gone in with the assists on and it is actually pretty tough even with the assists on but it is playable very much so, so really don't be put off by that. Now, there are actually 10 circuits in addition to this Isle of Man circuit, or sorry, including this Isle of Man circuit. So they're all TT oriented tracks. Um, but you know, don't be put off by the fact you think this is just one circuit. It isn't, there's a lot of circuits. There is an in-game campaign and career as well, which looks pretty extensive from what I have touched so far. I've only done three or four events, but it does seem to be you know, a rolling career where you just keep racing and you'll get invites to various events and stuff, similar to you know, Race Driver or Toka Race Driver back on PS2 days, or some of the other games like Project Cars, Project Cars 2, they have a similar kind of calendar set up where you do racing and stuff. Really like this view here, the uh, sun up in the left corner there, as I'm storming down this road. Now, so far I'm 14 minutes in and no accident. As I said, I can't touch wood because I'm going to have an accident if I do that. Very nearly lost it there. Need to back off a little bit here on this section. Back off here, quite a nasty little section there. Up to 200 plus kilometers an hour here, absolutely mental. But you can see what I mean by the game, it just looks fantastic. 
in you know in terms of the you know the size of the track and everything the detail they put in just look really good and even the scenery in the background with the skyscape if you like looks really nice bike models look fantastic as do the riders some people might complain about the way the rider moves it's kind of fast twitchy movements as opposed to fluid movements like you get in um i think rides a bit more fluid actually if i remember rightly but um I'm, I'm happy with them it doesn't bother me that much i think it's you know it's pretty cool they they move humanish you know even if they are very twitchy so far 15 minutes in no accidents I'm jinxing myself here i'm probably going to come off in a second storm it around this call this is particularly nasty Ben this you do need to back all the back end lifted then you do need to back off for this because you will lose the rear wheel if you push too hard same with this section Just keeping it nice and tight to the wall there and this section as well could be quite nasty Try oh no 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 very nearly lost it there, that was close. Really pushed it to the limit there. I was pushing it a little bit too hard to be honest. I very nearly lost the bike. This is the bungalow, this is lethal, this corner. You have to slow right down for this thing. So 16 minutes in, no incidents. So pretty good going here at the moment for me. This is the cleanest I've been as yet. So the game actually this game I should have received a copy through the mail and it didn't turn up so I got pretty annoyed and actually went and bought one at the local supermarket and what I found was I was going to order one online so I could get it kind of that day and everything but most places have actually sold out of this game so this game actually appears to have sold quite well no I came off, there was like a lump in the road there that threw me off the track. Crap. Oh well, 16 minutes, 50 odd seconds without an incident is pretty good I think. So this is where everything starts to go wrong I expect. It does actually start to get quite technical, the ND sections aren't too bad because they're very fast. But there is, I think there's another little lump in the road at some point. I haven't quite mastered that section, it has taken me off every time hit the damn thing so far really nice no oh, no I'm way too fast shit okay so that's two incidents now and so it begins what's that uh, movie and now the screaming starts <laughs> so, <laughs> that was a bit frustrating oh, no. all that clean time and I blew it well, I'm going to have to do it again I will do it again for the channel anyway once I you know get a bit better at this obviously this is an early day run so you know, mistakes are going to happen. Um, I love if they didn't. Shit. Oh, my man was flying in the air then. Those magnificent men without their flying machines. They go down, down, down. That bloody hurt. Right. It's a free accident. It's all going wrong. I was doing so well. It's all going down the toilet. Oh, a bit of a jump there as I came around the corner, pushing it a little bit. Quite a nice entry to the corner and exit, but there's obviously a bit of a bump there. Massive long section here. Going to boost this as fast as I can go. 262, 270, 80. Backing it off. Bit of a sharp corner here. Quite nicely taken into another massive straight oh we got a bit of a kink at the bottom there 280 km there I'm gonna oh shit I was too quick into it I thought I could have made that I was a little bit further out than I should have been I should have been a little bit slower hit it too fast damn it it's four times off now it's all falling to pieces so I'm 19 minutes in here so I've only got another two to three minutes at most I reckon nasty old right hander here I need to back right off for this thing and we're going into the I think this is the last few corners actually oh excuse me 
my sleep apnea kicking in, not a good time. Yeah, this is the very last section before we go into the main straight. Crap. Oh, I come off again. Lost it. That's, that's a really nasty corner, that. Really nasty corner. This is seriously nasty. It's a roundabout, and oh, I slid it on the end. I was way too fast again. I keep forgetting to slow down for that. It's a roundabout, but basically, don't go round the roundabout. You just take like a U turn on this thing. And that corner back there was a nightmare as well. And then this is into the straight into the finish. So, this is my first lap in the third person perspective Super Sport on the Honda CBR 600RR. And I got, what did I get? 20 minutes, 21 seconds. So that put me 650th in the world. So take a look at the top time in a few moments. There we go. So 16.31. That's a hell of a time. The world record on this is what is it super sport the world record which is held by michael dunlop on the honda cbr 600r which is what i've just driven or ridden i should say and it was an average speed of 128.666 miles an hour or 207.067 kilometers an hour and the time was 17 minutes 35 seconds 659 so this guy on the leaderboard managed to get better than a minute than the real world time. So I think that's yeah, something not right there, that's for sure. So this is now my second lap on this time the CBR 1000. Okay, the CBR 1000 RR. And this is quite a beast of a bike, this thing. So, this CBR 1000RR is 200 horses, it's 205 kilograms in weight, and it'll get up to 328 kilometers an hour, this thing. Absolute monster of a bike. And you can really feel it. The thing I'm noticing the difference between the Super Sport and the Super Bike, as I was saying earlier, is you can feel the weight a lot more in the Super Bike, and you can really feel the suspension working off what's coming off then up the curb get off the curb Jesus that was close so you can see my ghost up in front which I'm obviously going to try and reel in if I can but it's going to be tough because you know riding in this view is it's not the closest method of racing obviously the closest is kind of grill mode right out in front but it, it's worse than grill mode because you've got the high intensity of the speed. Look, look at this, it's crazy. The wind is screaming past me. I can barely. Oh shit. Nasty accident there. I was about to say I could barely see what's going on and I just didn't move it in time for that section. But the flickering of the light on the visor makes it very difficult to see what's up ahead. And. Obviously, you're traveling at high speed, 300 kilometers an hour, 250 kilometers an hour, and when you can't see what's going on all of a sudden, you know, it's just death. It's, it's just going to mean coming off the bike, and I'm finding this section here really tough to see what's going on. Now I'm okay because obviously I can see there's a massive gap up in front of me. I can actually hammer the life out of this thing, get off the wall. Oh! Nasty accident. So that's accident number two, and I'm only two minutes in. This is a lot tougher to ride in this um, particular view perspective. As I said, I didn't really take into account. I mean, they've actually done a brilliant job of, you know, emulating what it's like on on a bike through the visor because this is actually really tough to see what's going on. And oh shit, up the curb, not good. But you're getting the reflections off of the sun and stuff hit the visor, which is when you kind of lose your concentration in seeing what's up ahead. So this is really, really tough mode to um, ride in, that's for sure. 
quite like the dashboard there, the uh, digital dash ticking away as I'm going through the gears. And you know, there's just a really great sensation of speed, weight, and grip from this bike. It is really, really awesome to drive, at least to ride, until you have an accident, of course, like that. So that's not what my third accident, I think. So obviously I got what 16 or nearly 17 minutes into the third person perspective without an accident. So far I've come off three times. I'm not even four minutes in yet. So quite a nasty section this. Oh a real judder as I went around the corner there. Back wheel struggling to get grip. Fortunately it caught traction. Steer it wide there at the back off a little bit. Caught the grass, not good. Storming it here, I've got a bit of a left hander, quite a tricky one coming up. Gonna back off a bit here, take her through, keep nice and tight to that verge. Got a nasty section coming up, back it off, back it off. Got the back end go just a little bit there, but back right off for this section. That was nicely done. Not that bad at all, considering I'm in this mode, which I've not driven, I've not ridden for until now, by the way. Um, I wanted to save that for the uh, channel. Oh, that was nasty. I couldn't really see what was going on. There. Around the next section. This is quite a technical little section, this. It's quite tough. And in this view, it is. The bike is more sensitive, but it's not stupid sensitive like you get in a lot of these sort of bike simulation games. Some of them just feel too twitchy. They don't feel like they've got the way of the bike behind them. This feels perfect. It really does. And as a result, even though it's a little bit twitchy, it's not ridiculously twitchy that you can't control it. Or you you know you tap it and you just land up in the hedge or whatever. This is actually really good handling. Bike kicking around here, bouncing up and down really giving my hands on the controller a workout this vibration Ooh. a little bit of speed there kind of swayed in and out up to 300 plus kilometers an hour back off a little bit there a little bit of a kink in the road and into this section i seem to have lost my ghost actually i thought my ghost is up front I didn't really see what happened with the ghost actually. I should have been paying attention. That was close. Clean pants, please. And then it's into this downhill section. Nice fast section, this. Got a bit of a kink coming up. Oh, that's the house wall. Be careful of this nasty little section. Okay, here we go. Back off, back off. lift there as I went over the hill. Bit of a kink in the road, nothing major. Just need to back off just a little bit and then full on the throttle. Try and squeeze some more of this. I can't do it for too long though. I'm going to back off at the bottom here. Not too bad. It's about three minutes so far without another incident as yet. Fingers crossed. I'm going to break heavy here. And again, oh, bit of a slip there. Thought I was coming off. That was quite nicely taken, if I may say so. And then into another fast section, gonna flatten this out. I know we've got a big right hander coming up, start breaking heavy, heavy, heavy. Come on, slow down. That's it. Through the town now, quite a nasty section this. Not as technical as it looks. You, know, you can get some pretty good speed through here. You do you need to back off on the occasion because you kind of get launched in some sections, kind of lifts you high. Whoa, I nearly lost it there. That was really close. And again, back off here. This is the house that I crashed into first time around. And a little bit of a lift there as I went over the hill. 
seriously screaming along here, 180 plus on average I'm doing at the moment. Now I'm getting some big speed into this section, back off a little bit there, and then force that throttle down very unnervingly close to the edge there, or the hedge I should say, or the hedgerow. And then into, oh, oh so much concentration needed. Couldn't actually see the road then, that confused me. Now I can see where I'm going. Again. A bit of a right hand here, 200. Not breaking it right down. This is that Raven pub. Need to slow this right down. A little bit of a launch there. Slow it right down so I can keep control of the bike and not come off. So, so far about five minutes, no accidents. So I'm getting used to this. We're getting better. Obviously I've had the advantage now of riding this. This is my, what, my fifth lap on the circuit now. Uh, or f no, fourth lap on the circuit, sorry. Ooh. is back off a little bit there is actually um, quite a good rider customization in terms of color setups and stuff so you can kind of you know, it's generic kind of rider suit you just set up the colors for it and so I think there was three or four colors you, you know, kind of configure that was you to get a pretty um, pretty good color setup for your rider gear anyway when you're racing things like the time attack modes, then you actually typically ride as another rider. So one of the known riders like Mike um, Dunlop or um, John McGuinness, you, know, you know, key guys from this race. So this gets a little bit trickier here. Try and take it all, caught the side of the track there. That was lucky. I did not get murdered there as I clip that side of the track bring it through this section quite dark here quite tricky to see what's going on although I must admit not as tricky as when that sun starts hitting the visor and you can't see what's going on I barely saw that wall then that was close I mean you had that real fast section again up to 250 plus and the back are off go through this section full on speed here no not the curb not the curb managed to control it there again got away with murder there that was very lucky and then into this tight left hander so so far about six and a half minutes no accidents nice recovery from the first three incidents that's not good shit Oh, I caught the grass and it kind of kicked me outwards. I spoke too soon again. So that's the accident, I think it was accident number four, is it? I might have lost track. So far too many for my liking, that's for sure. So on we on we push. You have to forgive me for keep yawning at the moment, I am seriously having a bad time this week with my severe sleep apnea which is you know basically when i sleep i don't sleep i've got a machine that's not helping me i've had several different machines and masks and none of them particularly great as a result my sleep is every let me get this right every seven hours of sleep is equal to actual 14 minutes of sleep for me so my body's working 24 7 so i'm kind of you know, it kicks in the gear, tries to break me, kick me, kick start me and get me breathing again. Oh, fuck, sorry, I messed this corner up. Um, God damn it. But basically, you know, sleep apnea in itself is when you stop breathing during your sleep and then your body has to kick start you every time you stop breathing. I stop breathing 21 times an hour and because of that, I get, um, like I said, you know, seven hours of sleep to me or seven hours of having my eyes closed, I should say, is the equivalent of 14 minutes sleep for me. So I don't get a whole lot of sleep. 
and I get pretty tired, especially when doing things like this, because this is very intense concentration. And oh, nicely taken there. Really nasty technical section of the track there. There's my ghost actually, so my ghost is up in front of me. So if I can keep pushing this and not making more mistakes, I might catch him. But um, but yeah, the sleep apnea is you know really trying on um, my mind as well because obviously I you know struggle to get to do things during the day. I haven't actually got to do. Oh no, oh, I just kept it. I haven't actually got to do a whole lot this point for the channel purely because I've just been too tired. So I'm now you know doing this on day of release, but I am really struggling to stay awake here. Plus, when I yawn, I keep closing my eyes. I really don't want to close my eyes while I'm doing this because that's not going to be good. Cool. Oh, I think I just tip clip the grass there. Not too bad. Really awesome section of road. This love this. Absolutely amazing. Love the sun up there. And you can get that reflection off the ground. I don't know if there's weather in this game. Um, maybe not. I don't know. Good if there is, because that will make things a hell of a lot harder, obviously. But the um, you can really get the reflection off the track. There's a bit of moistness on the track, I think, which is why you're getting this kickback off the uh, track, making it difficult to see. Very nearly came off then. Lost a bit of rear traction. And this is quite a far section, this took that a bit quicker than I did last time I think in that um, third person perspective so really storming this, I'm actually doing better in this mode than I thought I would I thought I'd just be crashing for two minutes so I managed to do it, I think I've done a respectable job here in my opinion at this point, get off the kerb and you actually get, you can see there on the visor there's a build up of muck from the road, whether that's simulated insects hitting the uh, windshield of the bike or the fairing of the bike or whether it's just a build up of dirt I don't know but it's quite effective and obviously unfortunately it's making it all that harder for me to see what the hell is going on Call the curb then back there it's cost me a bit of time I had to back right off the accelerator when I hit that curb because that is the kind of thing that's just going to kick the bike around on me and push it through here. We've got 100, 200 kilometers an hour at the moment. And to back off a bit for this section, suspension was really jumping through there. So I think it's quite an uneven bit of road there, based on what I just felt. Tight corner. Don't get off. Oh no! I kept clipped the wall. I just tried to not go as wide as I was going to go, and then I tapped the wall and it took me off the bike. Damn it. So it's 16.35 here. So we've got about another, I've had a few more accidents, so I'm guessing another five seconds at least, five minutes, sorry, at least, to get through this particular lap. If I don't come off again, I very nearly did that. The fact I've come off is making me want to push even harder now to make up for lost time. But obviously that could just land up with me having more accidents and getting a bigger gain on time than a loss on time. So we'll see how it goes. I'm really going to push this as hard as I can though. And see what I can know. Oh, straight off the bank again. That's what happens when you push it too hard. I think I'm maybe trying a little bit too hard now. So maybe I need to get a little bit more reserved and hopefully stop as many incidences happen happening oh that was bad that was seriously close no get off oh, flying through the air again crap so it came off again oh man doesn't help but I'm really tired of doing this excuse me oh really struggling to stay awake here and that is not helping I'm going to go flat out here I'm going to keep pushing this to the limit hopefully I can react in time if there's a sharp bend and stuff we shall see one coming up now just back off a little bit 
I don't think I've met those bumps in the road that took me off last time. So we need to try and stay mindful for those because I haven't yet got around those without coming off. A bit of a tight turn here. Road gets a little bit narrower there. Going wide, I'm up the hedge. Oh. Not good. Shot up the hedge again. That must be at least my eighth accident now. I think seven or eight accident. Must have at least cost me a minute at this point. That's for sure. All caught the grass there as I came around the edge. So I reckon I've got another two minutes of this to go, approximately. Thereabouts. So really nice section of storm down this little bit. Cool as that one. Absolutely blast the hell out of this thing. Got a bit of a tight left hander coming up, gonna back off just a little bit. A little bit too much I backed off actually there, didn't need to do that. Better safe than sorry though, I've come off quite a few times already. Let's see if I can scrimp some of those lost minutes. If you're watching this and you own TT Isle of Man Ride on the Edge, it doesn't matter which format and you're getting some pretty good times, feel free to pop those in the comment field below for the TT Isle of Man circuit, the Snakefield Mountain circuit. It'd be good to see what the community is doing out there and obviously it'll give me something else to aim for if you beat my time or do a better time than me. It'll just drive me to do that a little bit better on my next attempts. At this point in time, we're getting pretty much to the end of the Ironman TT circuit in cockpit mode. So I'll take this opportunity to thank you guys and gals for watching. I will be back with plenty more TT Ironman Ride on the Edge. I'll also be back with plenty more gravel this week, as well as some Forza Motorsport 7 and other gaming goodies. If you enjoyed the video, please be kind enough to like it. If you enjoy what you're watching, you like some of the content that I'm putting together, it'd be great if you could subscribe to the channel, give me some support. Everyone's welcome at King Lizard's Game Lounge. Take care, keep well, keep watching, and come back soon.